Bucky Boys Podcast. I do love my friends. Uh, and they support it, whatever they can, through the crowdfunding we did for Kickstarter. So I'll see all the names pop up. And the ones who couldn't, like the really high up, like really old school mentality, they'll be like, just give me cash. Like, here, here's cash. I'll say, oh, thanks. It's like, Wait, they gave you like money to support your project? Because they don't know how to use Kickstarter. No They're fees, like, man. Yeah, and no <laughs> fees and they keep it. But I was like, oh, well, I have to take your money and then kind of cycle it through so it looks successful. So I'm gonna lose like 3% of that cash flow, but it has to look good. You know, it's like all, you know, logistics yeah. and everything. But yeah, you know, it was great. Like one, one of my friends dropped us one G. I was like, well, thanks man, I appreciate it. Um, was that a surprise that, you know, it came from people, you know, people from your, your, your past, your childhood? Uh, a little bit because some of them, they have families, mm-hmm. they have kids to raise, so I'm not right, expecting. It's like, hey, give obligation. me at least a hundred. I'll be like, I'll be happy, you know? Or if you can't at least spread the word, and I'm, I'm, I'm so humble, but a few of them gave a few hundred bucks. Just so to, you, you kind of hit the jackpot, sort of, right? I mean, you got what you were looking for when you were younger, right? You you wanted that brotherhood, that friendship, that real friendship, and last long, and now all the way to your adulthood, it's still there. Even though you may not have found it in the most traditional way, Yeah, um, it still worked out for you. I think it did uh, only because we had a really great friend who passed away a long time ago of cancer um and he really put the camaraderie like brotherhood like he told us like hey friendship first i mean family and friendship first um and he's like always talk it out don't don't get mad um what's the point like why fight over a girl you know things like that like he really grounded us and when he passed away it really made us more connected and we tried we tried really hard to at least see each other once or twice a year like we'll rent an Airbnb out, go to Philly, California, just do a little small trip. But now they're married and have kids, it's totally different. So I understand, you know, but they, they're still love. They'll, I think my one of my f- first successful f- film festival, my sister surprised me and invited all of them. It wasn't a great venue, but you know, at the end they were like, wow, Pat, you made this? I was like, yeah. And you know, you have this talent. I was like, what are you, my parent? <laughs> like, you're, an, you're an asshole. I mean, you know, the ball busters, you know, but, Going back to camaraderie and the film for Father's Son, I really want to take that homage of group of friends and friendship into our story, a little element to it. Which, and uh, because Were you able to do that for this? A little bit, because I, we had to focus on Jack, Detective Jack U. But I want to show that a little bit of it, just to show like what uh, Norm said, they don't show the repercussions of joining a gang. Uh, what happens to the family uh, when news break out, like if a kid is arrested, died, whatever. And But before I had to write that story down, I had to get Henry's approval because it wasn't in his in his books. Um, you know, so I was like, Henry here, uh, this is my pitch. Let me know what you think. Now, Henry, did, when you saw the film, did, did you feel like it was very close to what you thought about when you wrote your books? I think it was pretty much spot on for what we were trying to do. Um, you know, most of my writing is, is crime, it's violence, it's brutal, and you know, it's it's very sentimental. And I think he, he caught the right nuances of that, and we were lucky to have Tai Ma and Perry Young and uh, Ronnie Chang. How all that happened is, it's just something you don't normally see when you're doing independent film and you got no money and you have to, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Uh, asking uh, all the different locations. If, no, you if, helped if, out too. If, if it was me asking all these people, I probably, they probably, you know. But he had a way of asking. I know you had Yishin with, with you too. And some of the places that you got for locations, I was like, wow, that's cool. That really, that really makes it. And plus, we were fortunate in, enough too. We had Wings Apartment yeah. to use. We had oh, Wings, the production designer of our film, right? Yeah. And we had another friend who let us use his apartment. And you know, so we you were able to call in a lot of his favors and and uh, well, you did most of the work too. Like a lot of people really love and respect I did. him. <laughs> no, no, it's like Wing did it for you. Grayson did it for you. I got the other like the precinct and so and so, but. It shows a lot of people really was rooting for Henry's film to be adapted live. 
And I was like, wow, people really love Henry. They're really rooting for him. It's like, some say, finally, after so many years, you're going to finally make a Detective Jack U live adaptation. It's funny, really <clears throat> quick back, when I did the Kickstarter, someone told me, which is part of the crew, he was negative. He's like, I don't think I can hit the goal. They're like, that much? Nah. And then next day. This he, was your part of your production crew? Yeah, yeah. And he's gone, right? <laughs> No, 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 no. Like, like uh, it's a long story, but no, no. Uh, he did his job. Like, you know, he's he's still cool. In my book, but he said, "I did not know. You, I did not think you hit your goal. You were asking for too much for a short film." And then the next day, he saw like, "Holy shit! You already raised fifteen grand within twenty four hours." I was like, "Yeah, well, not bad for a no name film." Yeah. But right. I think it did help with Ty, and and Ty goes back to Henry, you mm-hmm. know. And we didn't have Ronnie Cheng at that time yet, but. Most of the people who donated or can pledge was all the people from Chinatown and all his friends. You know, they're really, really rooting for something like that. And yeah, they were just like, we want this to happen. And some of them were this week, I was like, can I be in the film? You know, can I be your friend now? I'm like, oh God, I didn't want to deal with that, bro. Wait, some what? Can I be your friend? Oh, can I be in the film? Just random people, people random from the people past? Or some of Henry's friends. Uh, <laughs> want to be in it like a little cameo or can I have a role I was like hey I don't all the people I told no <laughs> they went to Patrick <laughs> yeah please please, please. I mean no. I, I try to look as a business and also I didn't have time to think about that I was like I'm not gonna please you or just well you have to look at your film first the integrity of the film yeah. and the look that you want yeah it's nothing personal <laughs> yeah right I will say this one guy wanted to donate uh, the thousand dollar tier only if he gets Ty and Ma's number and if he can come to his or uh charity uh function. It's like, no, man, that's not how it works. Is that extortion? I feel like that's it is <laughs> extortion. <kind of. laughs> and Henry saw it and he's like, Should we ask? I was like, No, man, that's not how we treat friends. Like, Ty to oh, yeah, give us a thousand and Ty will be your show monkey. Like, that's not how it works, man. So we politely mm-hmm. declined and he just gave us 500. I was like, wow, you, you I'm, oh, I'm sorry, 100. He just talked to talk. But That's still nice that he gave 100. Yeah, yeah, but he was boosting us like, I'll give you a 1,000. And then Henry yeah. told me, uh, I don't know who they are. It's like, is he an actor or, or a filmmaker? No, no, no. Like, why a, did he want to get with Ty so bad? He's a, a community he's leader. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like part of uh, the Queens District. Okay. I don't know him personally. Okay. I never met him. Uh, and then Henry told me people from the hospital industry said all oh, the kids want to be in a film but we'll give you 2000 if you give us our kids like roles oh yeah yeah i don't know where also, that came from but there were parents that tried to pay you upwards of two thousand dollars just so the kids can get a role yeah something like that yeah and then i said that discussions ended we're no we're not gonna do that do you no. still have the number i think i'm gonna make a film <laughs> um but yeah i mean it was nice that they want to be part of the film but we had to think of the story first and also there's only limited characters that we can give out to and also i wanted it to give roles to actors who really deserve it who are working struggling actors you know stuff like that i mean you two saw the film uh virtually and what do you guys think it, it definitely gave me vibes of like the the old school like young and the dangerous um, and what I appreciated about it was like, you know, it wasn't hardcore gangster I, and I hate ha- hardcore gangster films. I, I come from the generation where, you know, you had the good fellas, like it, it was really based on like, you know, the camaraderie, the story, like, and that's how, that's what I saw was like, you focused on certain aspects of that part of the life mm-hmm. that wasn't straightforward, like killing and, and all this stuff, but it's there. And then you focused on somebody who's trying to help the community and change the community. So I, I loved it. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, thanks, Norm. I saw it, and when I saw it on the bigger screen. Oh, you saw it in? Oh, yeah, he saw yeah. it, well, he saw it because we were finally done with sound design. Yeah, so we want to get his, and plus, it was during the pandemic when we did the post-production. It was a really brutal year and a half, oh, and man. we had nothing to do. People were locked in. You know, I couldn't rush people to do the, the post quick enough because they had to do their job. But fast forward, when we finally reached to that stage of the final sound design, picture was locked. Henry was just like, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Because he was worried about COVID and his health. Like, I want to see before anything else happened. And I understood that. 
And yeah, so Tammy finally got to see it at you know Will, William Shea's uh, sound design studio. You know, it's a, it's a it's a long way from seeing it on your laptop. <laughs> and then you see it yeah, surround sound. Yeah, okay, now, now I'm gonna, and and that's not even a really big screen, no. but a bigger screen. And I'm still excited about, you know, where it's gonna play, as it comes back to New York City. Excited to see what that's gonna look like when we see it at probably ACV at the big yeah. screen. Yeah. So uh, exciting times. And and not just that, they're also gonna show. Corky, uh, Curtis is Chin's short documentary, Dear Corky. Right. Um, you know, because Corky unfortunately uh, left us at a bad time during the pandemic. He got COVID. Going to be an and emotional. Can you night. can you just explain people hearing Corky leave name for the first time here? Like who who was he and why why does he matter to Chinatown? Well, Corky has this. Uh, he's known as the unofficial photographer laureate of Asian America. And that's because he, for all those decades, he covered all these events, not just Chinese American, but Japanese, Korean, South Asian, and uh, all his pictures are, are iconic, and they like they captured history. And uh, you know, you can Google him. He certainly was a uh, a larger than in life personality, and you know, the guy is just a. A legend, and I know people say that about you when you die, you're gone. They call you a legend, but he really, he really was a guy who was there for everything, and his mission was to capture Asian America, the Asian America that um, mass media doesn't pay attention to, to stories and people that they refuse to cover. That was Corky's focus. And he was revered by a lot of people in the Asian American movement. And here we are, 18 months since he passed, and people still doing tributes to him. ACV is going to do their corky, and you yeah, know, yeah. Kenneth and made that film. And, and, we, and we dedicate the film to him because he's, he's in the film. Uh, he has right. a cameo. That's right. Um, there's another book of Corky's photographs is going to come out next year. You know, so it's ongoing, and it's amazing that every couple of months there's another tribute, there's another memorial, and, you know, he's gone 18 months, and but not forgotten. Yeah. Well said, Henry. Yeah. Well, what are your experiences with Corky? I mean, I wasn't as tight with Corky or people assumed I knew him longer. Uh, I didn't know him that long. I heard of him, but when I did get a chance to meet him, he was just very pleasant to be around you know never had an attitude always told these stories I'm like god damn this motherfucker has a fucking memory of an elephant he knows a lot of shit back then but he's very also conservative about his past um but he used to uh organize these events at uh 21 pell street at a church here in chinatown to show uh films or do maybe like talk or public speaking to help boost other artists independent artists like if you had a short film, well, he's like, hey, we'll come over. Let's show you a short film at 21 Pell Street for the community. So I showed a couple minds and he was just boosting me. He's a filmmaker. Just check him out. I was like, oh, thank you, Corky. You're such a nice guy. And we just have casual talks. Sometimes he talks too much. I'm like, Corky, I don't, I don't have time, man. It's like, I got to go. I'm, but I regret it. I personally regret it. I should have sat down with him more. But... um. Oh, he would have been great for the podcast. Oh, dude, you would have like maybe like a two day podcast with him. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh man, you know, but he's, he has wonderful stories. Wonderful stories. Such a sweet guy. Um, and then that time I asked him, um, "Do you want to be part of the film?" Because he said, "Can can I take photos of the project?" I was like, "Sure, Corky, but you do take time developing those photos because he's very anal about getting very particular shots. How it's developed should be printed. This and that. I, like, I don't have time for that. Just point and shoot that that sucker." But instead, I was like, hey, Corky, just come at the camera. You want to play a waiter with Ty? And he's like, oh, yeah, I sure would love to. I was like, all right, your call time is 10. So he came in, put on the hop key suit, um, <laughs> a baby blue powder shirt. Um, he couldn't speak Cantonese. I was very shocked. And I was oh, like, really? Yeah. Like, he speaks toy son, but it's really jibber-jabber. But I was like, Corky, don't worry about it. We'll ADR it. And uh, him and Ty was having a blast. Like, while we're working, 
you see Henry, Corky, and Todd just living up, laughing in the corner, just like, let these young guns do this job. Just vibing. Yeah, just vibing, <laughs> you know? And Corky had a blast. And I think that's where Ronnie Chen met Corky for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. And, you know, we got him, we got other people in our film. Especially, we all know him, uh, Jeff, who passed away recently from cancer. Jeff Lee, yeah. Jeff Lee, yeah. yeah. Great guy. Oh, awesome we, guy. We, we did a film together. Um, and just, I can tell you one thing about Jeff, he's, he's very giving. I call him, uh, how do I say, uh, Corky is Chinatown Saint. I call Jeff Chinatown Angel because he was just very pleasant to be and always, I won't say mothering, but just very uncle-ish, like just taking care of you or just like, hey, Will's upcoming, like, be part of this project. And he never asked something for back. Like, never asked, can I be in any role? If I get a role, you know, he's not like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's, Jeff is a great guy. I, I couldn't believe, um, I couldn't believe the news when I heard it. Um, I didn't want to believe it, but mm-hmm. yeah, he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. He's a, I mean, just my memories with him are all positive. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember even when from doing a film to him um, agreeing to come on a podcast Mm -hmm. and after the podcast we went to this uh, Mexican spot and dude we're just like we're just blowing back tequila shots Uh, (laughs) yeah man and it was just it was it was like late at night too right after the podcast in Brooklyn and we just found this random uh, Mexican bar it was was slash restaurant and uh, we just grabbed a little bite and then we said you know what when in Rome, right? Let's just get some tequila and just throw it back, man. And it was a great time. It was a yeah. great time. It was a lot of fun. He's a lot, you know, he, he never acted his age. Never. For all the right reasons. Yeah. You know, he's just like, the guy's a blast. He has more energy than people I know that's my age yeah. and younger. Yeah. You know, he has, he lived life with such an exuberance um, that was unmatched. That, uh, you know, it's just when you're with him, you, you don't, you don't see someone that looks his age right physically I, I i always saw someone that just wanted to have a good time someone that's super chill and had a lot of knowledge to share mm-hmm. you know and i and i know whenever he he shared something or an opinion i i felt safe because i knew it came from a good place mm-hmm. you know i think that was one of the most important um things people need to know about jeff is yeah. that uh, I, in my personal experience it it always felt like um, he he wanted to just give more of himself. Oh yeah, absolutely, you know, he, and help those around them become better. Yeah, I remember you you you, you told me a story about um, Jeff on the set. You told me that he wanted to help out on set, and oh. he would be a PA. And this guy, this I'm, we're telling you, this guy is like a legit actor. He's been on numerous TV shows, films. And he just wants to participate and help out, you know, on your project. And you say, I just want to help out. I'll be a PA, right? Yeah, just that's remember that. that. I forgot about that. Like, because, you know, we're all still coping with his death. But uh, it broke my heart when he said, Patrick, uh, uh, are you okay? Because this is like, I think we just got funded or we're almost getting funded with, with the Kickstarter. He's like, Pat, secretly, he's like, uh, are you okay? Like, do you need help? I was like, no, nah, I got to you know, run around hire the right people to here and there and this and that he's like dude if you need if you're shorthand i'll be a pa i looked at him like dude you're fucking 60 something i'm not gonna ask you to become a pa you know we gonna do carry a- apple boxes like f- can you can you describe what a pa is for the people not in the oh, PA's a familiar with film, film lingo they're the they're the grunts of, in the crew but you know they're also the leg of the crew because they're the one who fetch and go and grab it they're the one to just the go for it so just you they get their hands dirty. Yeah, they're getting hands dirty. And sometimes they don't get paid. So you got to appreciate their time. Like, I was a PA in the past. But you learn a lot, depending on what project. So I appreciate PAs and what they do. But they have to be young. You, you can't be at a certain age to lift up equipment or wires. It's dangerous and there's rules to it. So when Jeff said that, I was like, no, Jeff. You're going to have a role. Like, it's not a speaking role, but you're going to have a, some kind of interaction in the film. But he's like, I want you to do well because I want Henry to do well. Because I want my friend really to do well. And you see like a little tear. And I was like, God damn it, Jeff. Like he was giving me this guilt trip. Please do well. Yeah, and, and he was just <laughs> the messenger between certain people like Henry or Victor. or Because he was just wanted us to have that green light to go. And he's always curious about the production even though he wasn't part of the production. Meaning like he wasn't a producer or anything. But he's just like, how's it going? How's the money? Who's you hired? 
um, never asking, do I have a role as an actor? He was just wondering, how's the project doing? I want to make sounds, sure. That sounds like Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then one time we were doing the, the fight scene uh, in December, cold. People wearing t-shirts and leather jackets, um, gorilla style, uh, just a cart with the cameras. There's no heaters, no trailers, nothing. Jeff came out 11 o'clock at night to 3 o'clock in the morning just to hang out with us. And I asked him, please don't pick up anything. But he did. Like, he left a little garbage here and there, carried maybe uh, a few Apple boxes. We didn't ask him to, but he just wanted to. And he was just hanging out with us, just witnessing the, the you know, how I was directing and how the actors were interacting. Um, and it was fun. And these young actors just hang out with this, like, old uncle who's kind of, like, wearing this long trench black leather jacket with this... Uncle Jackie from Jackie Chan Adventures hairstyle, like very poof. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a great head of hair, man. He did, he did, he did, he did. For, he did. for yeah. his age, you know. Um, I, I mean, my impression, immediate impression of Jeff when I first met him, I'm like, this is a guy that just loves being around this space. Anything that's creative or mm-hmm. with the arts, he was born for it. Mm-hmm. And he's always, always there to support his friends. He takes time, you know. Like he really love you, Henry, for sure. He really love you. Yeah, mutual. Yeah. Miss, um, miss that guy. Yeah. So going back to ACV, I, I heard from, they, they, sh- they were or plan to uh, dedicate. And what's ACV for people? Asian Cinema Vision. Uh, they're the oldest and first Asian American film festival in North America from what I was told. I think this is their 45th anniversary. Um, Corky and, and Ty and everybody all were a part of it in the early heydays when it's starting up, up and coming. So when news broke out they, about Corky and Jeff, they want to dedicate the ceremony to them, from what I've heard. So I'm looking forward to it. I want to see how it's going to turn out. Um, you know, hopefully his, fam- his friends and family will show up and support the project. Um, but it's great. I agree. I think that's really important, um, especially in the Asian American community, to support these artists and remember and honor honor them because it's not popular uh at least on this side of the world right where um if we tell our parents hey i want to become a filmmaker i want to become an artist i want to do music or i want to make a film Mm -hmm. or become an actor what's or an athlete even what's the response usually it's a big hell no Mm -hmm. right it's stick with school and do something that involves the, the world of STEM, right? Um, I, I, th- I think it's important that we show these success stories mm-hmm. um, and, and may not all be rich and famous and fully monetized, right, in the way that you would hope, but what about satisfying who you are, right? I think that's important, a, a part of being a person spiritually and uh, looking to to express yourself rather than um, if you're not the type to be in a cubicle all day, Mm -hmm. right? Um, With countless Zoom meetings. uh, I I just can't imagine that's anyone's idea of expressing themselves fully. And I mean, some people are fine with that lifestyle, you know? Uh, Not for an artist. Not for artists. Can you imagine Jeff or you or Norm doing that, like, I think. Oh, in Zoom meetings? You guys, yeah, well, no, all day, every day, nine to five. I mean, like, who did we hear? Who, we had this girl from, uh, um, on our podcast. Oh, my gosh, I feel so bad for not remembering her name. It was like a year or something ago. Um, they, they do this. They, they were really big in Chinatown during COVID. Welcome to Chinatown? Welcome what? to Chinatown. Okay. So we had the Welcome to Chinatown girls, and she said she was on Zoom meetings, brutal Zoom meetings, like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11. And I'm listening to her. And when I spoke to her off camera, all I could think about is this girl's brilliant and she's, she's like got all these ideas and I see a lot of creativity in her and I couldn't help, I didn't say it to her, but in my mind I couldn't help but imagine like what if her real superpower isn't accounting or sitting in desk crunching Excel spreadsheets and all these Zoom meetings explaining where the funds are, you know, whatever superpower is something else. And I bet her superpower is something else. She's just really good at doing that to survive, right? But, you know, she's able to help Welcome to Chinatown, be very successful with that organization. 
and and all I could do think about was like, man, if what if that energy was directed to what she was truly meant to do? Yeah. How and how many of us are the how many like Jeremy Lin's, Ronnie Chang's, right, Tai Ma's would there have been if we supported that more openly? Well, now now these days, yeah, it's, it's getting right. better, you know. But where we were growing up, no, and sidetrack but that's where the gang's lifestyle led to because no one supported us we we're looking for an outlet someone that we had some kind of support comfort and that was from our camaraderie um yeah man and well i heard norm but you saw it what do you think i mean we spoke privately but yeah i told you what i thought about yeah. it first i don't of think all, he's heard it yeah first of all the cinematography that stood out to me immediately i, I love what you guys did there with, with the um, DP, um, director of photography, yeah, Jason, and, yeah. and you directing. I mean, you guys. I think it was. Um, I, th I I thought it was well done. I, uh, another thing, the fact I was like, how the fuck did you get so many stars to agree, right, to to be in a short film? Because you're not this big time director, right? No, no, no. You're not, not this super. Not yet. You know, <laughs> but you're, you're, for them to go, all right, and then all the resources you're able to pull in. And then adapting from Henry, because I know Henry had his choice of people to adapt this book. And um, the fact that he went with you, I thought it was, you know, really telling. And I did see your past projects, so it was no surprise to me mm. that this film came out the way it did. Uh, what I will say is that I did want to see more, but it's a short film. Yeah. It's a short film. So, like, when it ended, I was like, fuck, you know, <laughs> kind of like, okay, it was like, I want more story, you know? So I, I think that was it for me, right? I, I did like all these parts, but I wanted more story. I wanted a deeper, I want something I could really sink my teeth into. I wanted to see more of the character's life. Um, I wanted to see Tai Ma a little more extended. Play. I don't want to give away too much, mm -hmm. right? Um, I wanted to see more Ronnie Chang develop with that part with his father mm -hmm. and then in the crime element too because I think there's a lot of story to tell there but I understand it's a short film and yeah. your budget and time can only allot for so much and you would probably still be working on it. <laughs> Actually that, that was intentional. That was you know something that we had spoken about. We wanted to leave it open at the end so precisely what you what you felt and I've heard it from other people like Man, I wanted more. And, and that's what we wanted them because uh, I, anyway, had this vision that somewhere down the line, this is going to be an episodic kind of series. So we wanted to put that kind of feeling in this, this short film that, that at the very end of the film, they're in the coffee shop and the rookie cop comes in and says, you know, hey, we got, uh, we've got somebody missing. And he said, yeah, go check it out. Now, you know, you know, cue me in and let me finish my noodles here, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, we wanted to leave it open. We wanted them, people to think more. And if we, if we, if we do get that cast together again, um, that would be really, um, really fabulous. I, I don't know if that's possible to get these three people as busy as they are. But let's see what happens. Like, so ahead. it was totally intentional to leave it open ended like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I told him with, with you know with the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe going on, they always had to do stingers. Everyone sits down for the very end credits. So like, why not? Why can't we pull that off? Um, so I left the open ending, and that scene was actually in book two, uh, Year of the Dog. Um, I actually. I think Ear Dog is probably my favorite book from the whole series. Uh, I haven't read book five yet, but uh, I like that element. So that camaraderie between the, the young rookie cop and the detective, it's almost, I mean, NYPD is kind of a gang. You know, you get the senior officers and the, the, the grunt works foot soldiers. So there was a camaraderie between those two. And I want to focus on that, like brotherhood. Like Ronnie's character, Detective Jack Yu, was to... Uh, mentor this young chinese american cop rookie off the street and show him that uh there's going to be discrimination for your nationality and for the for the uniform and 
you can't do it alone. I got to help you. I think he realized in his character, he got to realize that I got to serve my community by helping and push it forward. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, that's why all this is exciting right now. We're getting feedback from other people, and that's what you need. You know, you, you got a lot of people saying that they love it, but the uh, other criticisms, too, are just as valid. You know, somebody give you like, well, I like this, but, you know, this is kind of over here. It's like this. And you have to take that criticism and, and um, know that the next step is going to be better. That's a great... I love that you put it that way. I think a lot of the times ego can get in the way. Um, and that's what I'm telling when we're talking about Jeff. Like if Jeff had a criticism, I, kn- I knew because his breadth of, of work, right? He, I knew he had the background, but also um, I know it came from a good place, yeah. right? And I think it's important when you have people like that around you, um, they're not just saying something to try to neg you or make you lose or create self-doubt. They're actually trying to help you um, in the best way possible. And for you to realize that, and a lot of times as artists, it can be very sensitive. (gasps) My work is not perfect. (laughs) You know, like, how dare you? Um, Dude, I met a few of those. I'm like, in order to be better, you got to take it, man. It's really hard. But I'll tell you this. Well, I know it's not perfect. I know there's some flaws because during production, we had a lot of up and downs, schedule conflict people doing it for free or just uh, cutting half their pay, you know. Everyone came in because it was a passion project. And part of the reason some of them want to work with Time on Ronnie uh, and how was that like. But when the film was going, I mean, production was going, people had a blast. You know, uh, Yi Xing, she's our uh, assistant director. First time I met her, got to work, and she told us, like, oh, my God, I never felt a sense of community. Every time I'm on set, I'm either the only girl or the only Asian person on set. But here, you know, we could just men, men and women working on set, but we're all Asian or mostly Chinese, and we can communicate in Chinese, and we can get to see our fellow uh, actors and our Chinese just performing. It was, it was a great camaraderie too of that, and she loved it. And I think they all missed doing it. You know, um, what is your goal for the, all of this? Is is it? eventually to make a movie or episodic i mean you i know you mentioned the episodic part. are you guys on the same page yeah i am i am definitely leaning toward episodic i'm not even you know even confident that we can get these three actors back given how busy they are and the different projects they're involved in so um i like to leave that open but i definitely want to see it episodic because i think we have five books you have five books, not we. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of material. There's a lot of characters that we've just touched upon. And I think there's a lot of development there. So I'm excited about who is going to, you know, who's going to like this. And what sort of prospects we're going to have in the fall. And I, I like to be optimistic about it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I pitch it to Henry as you can't do this as a, as a feature film because there's way too much characters. Yeah. And then you love some of the characters in the film. I mean, in the books, I'm sorry. Um, that you want to see. Like, my, again, my favorite character was, besides Jack, was uh, Dennis, P.O. Dennis Wong. Right. Yeah, he, uh, played by Tim Liu. Um, the rookie cop? Yeah, the rookie cop. Um, so you want to see those characters develop more because they're the community of Chinatown, not just the the hero or figure, Jack Yu. You also have to get the dark side, the gangsters, you know, that probably Will will like. It's like, I want to see some gritty crime. That's not glorified by Hollywood. It's not oriental, you know? Um, and honestly, I, I, for me, like, you, you're right, Will. I rather want to see a gangster that's not tattooed up, that's just, like, very straight. You can't tell straight-A students, like, very manipulative. You're like, that cunning motherfucker it was the gang leader all That's the time charismatic yeah. i want to see that so yeah i want to see that side i love that uh, the whole in your face i've seen it and it's been poorly executed that well, whole uh, well let except, me get uh, this uh except for you know i've seen those films except for you have the dragon or john lone he played that character ish um you that's a really dragon? old that's a really old movie right? yeah 1980s uh uh john mickey, long mickey, mickey rourke. rourke yeah mickey he rourke. plays a white cop trying to save chinatown from the corruption of Ch- of the hop singh and yeah Kong. but you got a white you know white savior you don't we don't need that anymore yeah um 
But John Lone played the character. He was like the one that went against the the board leaders, the Dilos, and yeah. he was this upcoming young, enthusiastic drug lord. He wasn't a straight A student, but he was that charismatic uh, young bro- older brother, whatever you want to call it. I just don't think a lot of people can relate to that this day and age too, with the younger generation coming up and and uh, just like the people that aren't in that world. How how fascinating would it be if you were to open up a film where this person who doesn't look like they're supposed to do that is actually the leader of all this. It's the Godfather, mm-hmm. right? And and then he goes and does some ratchet shit. <laughs> And then the next scene, my guy's in school getting straight A's. And that's not a far-fetched story because it's actually a true story. You can, if you look at some of the history of, um, even History Channel did something on, on or they did, had this series called Gangland or something, right? And, and I think on, a, uh, I don't know if it's History or Discovery that produced it, but they, you know, you see this guy, it's straight A's and boom. And then talking to you guys, you know, these gangsters from Brooklyn Tech, that started these games. That's a, for anyone that don't know what Brooklyn Tech is, it's a specialized high school for the gifted and talented. Yep. So AKA people who have to have like good brains, they have to be smart in order to be accepted into that program. So you have people coming out of there that are choosing that lifestyle, but they're hiding in plain sight. Mm. I wanna see a story like that. I've seen all the tough guy shit and, and the tattoo stuff. I mean, that's, that's cool. That's cool, but I, I think this day and age, if you Imagine that adapted into a series. I'd fucking tune in. Yeah, and I think Hollywood, or they haven't told that story yet. They kind of skipped that generation, yeah. you know, and we really need to see that. I mean, it's been shown in black cinema, especially uh, HBO's The Wire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They show that with Idris Elba's character. Michael B. Jordan played, when I mean, he was young. He played that young gangster. Mm-hmm. Like He was like 13 mm-hmm. at the time. It was such a great TV show, and a lot of people say, oh, that's the best gang film, uh, TV show they ever seen. I'm like, why can't we have that? You know, um, but hopefully someone give us the opportunity. Um, That's a high bar, <laughs> The Wire. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I feel like right now they're just looking for that pretty boy, no martial arts, the uh, rich, the rich Asian boy. Yeah, right. or the Marvel Shang Chi superhero. You know, things like that. Um, <laughs> all right. So, I, but here's the thing. I think people are more willing to accept. Uh, like for example, they see an Italian Italian mob movie, right? Mm-hmm. Or black gang movie, right? Or Hispanic. I mean, they see an Asian person. This because there's a stigma, right? An Asian person being a tough guy, it's almost comical. So, I was showing this uh, this guy. He's a male model, European guy, right? Cool guy, right? Um, Showing him, I was like, yeah, the Asian, they make gang films and stuff like that. It's like, there's Asian, there's real, he's like, no, Asian people are gangsters. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, every culture, I mean, that's pretty naive to think that it's, he goes, no way, man, let me see it. I showed him it. He thought it was an SNL skit. <laughs> he was like, he goes, he started laughing. He goes, oh, wait, no, is this for real? He started, he started like, oh, that's pretty funny. Like just the Asian guy being tough and fighting. And then he, he stops as he continues to watch it and he's like wait is this is real i thought you were i was like no dude i i already primed it for you i said this is this not a jo-. he goes i thought you were joking i was like no i'm serious like yeah. he goes oh i thought that was gonna be a joke and he's not chinese no he's not chinese oh, oh yeah you but i'm telling you this how many people yeah. i mean because we are in this asian bubble right whether we like to admit it or not we're in this little bubble that nobody else is aware of mm-hmm. right so everyone outside of it they don't think that this world exists. So when you see an Asian guy who's either charismatic, handsome, a 007 type of guy, a James Bond, like, no way, shut up. Like, they, they, they just can't accept that. There's a big, um, uh, just something block, you know? It's just like, it's weird. Unless, unless it's in form of a joke, it can't be true. It's just hard for them to digest and even see that. It goes across the board. Where I think they're more willing to accept people that look like us in films and and it's not only like people that are in asia i think even other asians when they see an asian like a guy like that on a film they're just like i i know a couple of asians even when they look at like oh they should have picked someone else 
Yeah. I'm just like, excuse me? Yeah. They're like, he just, it was weird as soon as he came on screen. I was like, it's weird because you don't see it. It's not weird. It's weird because you don't see it. It's weird to you. Yeah. Uh, but I even heard Asian guys say it. Asian guys in, in our uh, group, uh, t- Norm and I group, t- tell me like, well, no. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's a different generation and they either live there in their own bubble as well. So it's sort of like we've seen all the facets because we grew up in the neighborhoods. We, we've seen you know asian kids who were who were book smart and went to school and we've seen asian kids you know on in the streets so it's it's i would say like they're in a bubble not really us because we we, we've seen it okay okay norm (laughs) don't hurt nobody now norm i I think i think norm is telling the truth i I think the truth to that um they, they do live in a bubble and i think it's the media's fault they don't portray us as accurate or they're not hiring us behind the cameras you know now do, uh, just a question for you do you think as creators we have the responsibility to show them that you know these type of people exist absolutely and break them out of their bubble like this is this is our responsibility as creators absolutely yeah i think so uh, uh it's our job to just do a right job and get the right hire the right people like some people just do it just for the gimmick you know, like people like, oh, what's what's in right now? Asians or LGBTQ, you know? No, just tell an authentic, genuine story. Get the right people involved that it's really passionate with you to execute it. doesn't matter if they're Asian or not. Just as long as they're in it for a ride, you know? But, um, yeah, it is our job to tell a good story, you know? I mean, I think I mentioned last time, look at Justin Chong. He's doing a great way to t- represent his Korean American side. Well, do you think that keeping it real... And authentic is what's going to sell versus hey if i do something more mainstream more commercial um that will perhaps appeal to a larger audience therefore bringing more opportunities my way i mean you could look at it that way but uh well i honestly think we need to keep it, especially for the chinese americans we need to keep it real because lately i don't really see us doing too well uh betraying our characters accurately you know um yeah here's here's what i hear from a lot of different artists um they initially go into it like you i was like oh i would never take a role and i will walk out right the audition if they tell me to speak like this and i don't think the character like that they they would get upset right yeah but here's the thing after a few years of no's, no, no, or not even hearing the no, you just don't get a call back when you yeah. after your audition. They're going, can I please have this role? I will talk like this. I will make YouTube channel and talk like this. I do anything you want. That's what I see. I, I, and I've been in this arena for quite a while mm-hmm. and people that I've worked with in the beginning were very gun ho about that. And eventually go, man, I'll just give me whatever. Give me whatever. And when I have a talk with them, I'm like, hey, why would you, you know, remember you said that? I understand people change. He goes, man, honestly, Will, I got to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm willing to sell out until I get noticed. And then when I have the power, then I'll make a shift. You know, so you're having to negotiate with yourself. Or maybe that's what he's saying to himself to justify it. But that's what, I mean, we hear from a lot of artists, Norm and I, yeah, that we work with. And when we talk to them about it, it's just kind of like, shit, man, that's tough. Yeah. And, and well, I, I, I think we said this before. Uh, I, I'm going to tell it again. Ty said it. If you have to do an accent, but if it serves the character authentically, then do it. If it doesn't, it's a gimmick because that's what Hollywood standard is to like, Hollywood see us, then yeah, you can say no. But like, that's what sells. It sells, but... I think we're, we're tw- it's 2022. You know, I think people- and in 2022 that still sells. Look at we had who do you have on a podcast? Stephen Stephen He. Yeah, yeah. I, the Steve- emotional damage. That Steve- guy. Yeah, he's in our film too. <laughs> yeah, so great guy. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. Awesome right? guy. And he told Talented. us a lot of people have a problem with him doing the Asian accent because of that. They think that he's selling out. He's setting Asians back several generations, and but. I mean, I'm I'm neither here or there. I'm just looking at it for what it is. Yeah. And that shit sells. 
it's like, hot cakes. And I get it because, like you were saying, he was struggling during pandemic. I saw he was not getting the roles he wanted. He was this no, not known actor from Ireland yes. originally. Yes. So he was just having fun, killing time during the pandemic to do these TikTok videos. And I think he's hustle. Uh, that was all by design, by the way. Start in TikTok. He told us on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm not saying he, but uh, uh, Stephen will do it. But I think if you're up to that level, it's your responsibility. Like how are you gonna pay it forward? If you're gonna sell out to pay the bills and play the stereotype, then what can you contribute to your own community? Like how can you flip it and pay it back, uh, forward? You know, like I learned that from Ty and Henry um, and stuff like that. Um, do people think he sold out though? I mean, in my circles, I don't have anyone telling well, me that they feel like he sold out. I don't think he sold out. I mean, I, we kind of know him. So I think he just, he had to do what he had to do to survive. But how do you guys feel about someone getting big off of the Asian accent? Well, I don't like it. I mean, it's just feeding into the stereotype. It feeds into all the anti-Asian hate. I mean, when you ridicule somebody's language and... You know, in light of the idea that they're trying to speak your language to survive in this country, and you know, you make a mockery out of it. So I don't like that. I think there's, you know, I can't tell anybody how to make a living, but it's like what Patrick says: How are you going to pay it forward? And what are you doing other than doing these roles, and and you know. Continuing the stereotype. Now, Henry, does I, I get what you're saying because right, I know where you come from, and Old I know school. a lot of people feel that way. You're definitely not the minority in that. Um, but does intent matter? Like, what if you intended just to make people laugh? If you weren't intending to hurt anyone's feelings or to make a mockery. You just wanted to make people laugh, and perhaps in your own household, you thought. You found the humor in in certain in the way people speak. Because I know, for example, um, I have a couple of my Filipino friends, um, even my wife, right? They'll like talk like with the Filipino accent uh, with the parents, and they they have a great way about making it funny, yeah. non offensive. Yeah. Uh, but it's just well, the parents might find it offensive, but they they do imitations of the parents, and it's it's hilarious, you know, like, like what Joy Coy does. Who? The comedian, Joe Coy. Oh, Joe Coy, yeah, yeah. exactly. Russell Peters. My wife wife is Filipino, and her and her sister go to town on the Filipino accent, and and I I, I find it funny. You know, I I don't look down on Filipino people, uh, but when they do it, I just, I I, kind of saw them do it as a, like a, it was almost like a term of endearment. Yeah. Right? They're, because they're doing it of the parents. So I'm wondering, does intent matter? Because when you're doing the Chinese accent, what if you're intending just to make people laugh because you find something funny um, about some, one of your relatives that they did and the way they said it. And then when you look at the American culture and the kind of like the, like it's, they don't intend to be funny, but they're unintentionally kind of hysterical. Do you find that offensive still? Well, you know, if you put it in that context, you know, the person is really just trying to make a personal joke among his friends. I think that's okay. It goes back to how black people can speak in their own language and say the things they say, but only black people can say that, right? And there's other people, their ethnicities, they can say, they can make those jokes, they can put on that accent. And as long as you know that it's comedy and they're making a little inside joke, that's okay. But if you're pre- presenting it as a mass media stereotype that you know just fosters hate and ridicule, then I'm against that. Like, did you Steve see uh, St- any of uh, Stephen He's clips? I think I have. Okay. I have. A, a, Do you find that offensive? That type of style? Well, you know, he's coming off as a comedian, so it's not like if he's doing that in a dramatic role. And the director tells him to do that because I want this kind of effect. Then you have to gauge it that way. Got it. Um, an example in mind is Yan can cook. Today we're going to make it the fish. We're going to cut the fish. We're going to chop, 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 chop. We're going to now cut the scallion. You know how to cut the scallion? We're going to do it like, just like that. And this is going to be delicious. 
He Done. Doesn't, he doesn't speak like that. <laughs> Wait, that that wasn't his Wait, real that his accent. accent? And he speaks English like you and I. Yeah, I heard that too. Get he was, the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, he's from Boston, right? He's uh, I don't see. I told well, you that <laughs> shit sells like hotcakes, man. Yep. It sells. It, it seemed to. I he, mean, did, he did that it, accent for to 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 look to more make, authentic. I know, I yeah. bro. There's there's entertainers. Well, I would say like models, because Asian or Asian women are so like um, sexualized that they would even though they have American first names, they would say, "Hey, use a Chinese." Um, yeah. So, right. for example, if your name is like Rebecca. Yeah. Right. They're like, no, I want you to use like Zhang Li or some, yeah. you know, I don't know if there's a Zhang Li, but you know, like, I don't want to use something ethnic name. sounding. Yeah. I want you to be more Chinese. Yeah. So they'll use a more Chinese name. And then, but in the acting world for women or men, Asians, or, or maybe if um, another race, but I know, uh, who is that a- actress? She was, uh, in that TV series, the sh- she's Shield? half Chloe, Chi- Bennett? Chloe Bennett, right? Her father is Asian her real or Chinese, Chloe Chen. right? Her real name is Chloe Chen. They told her to use Bennett so that she could have a broader appeal. <laughs> I get it. It's like it's like um, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen came out. Not Mar- but why is that? Why why in in the like the model world they'll they'll say hey be more ethnic, and then in the Hollywood world they'll say be less ethnic. I think it's because in model you're selling internationally. It tells you like oh that they're from that origin, but with Hollywood. It's America, you know, it's different, you know, like get more roles that way. But like, it's like Martin Sheen, he's actually Hispanic and he, he came out recently with an article, like he wished he didn't ret- uh, change his name to Sheen, but mm-hmm. he had What's to. his last name? Estevez or something yeah. like that? Yeah, Emil right. Estevez and Charlie Sheen. So their real last name is Estevez. Yeah. Um, it's also paper too. Well, like they look at the last names like, oh, they're Hispanic, ah. they're Chinese. Maybe not. You know, it doesn't matter how talented they Doesn't fill the are. role that they're looking for, even though they might have the look. Mm. They just skipped over the name and they looked at the name first and then like, okay, I tossed that. Well, that's right. back then, Lauren. Yeah. I don't know about now. Now you can yeah. just look at Instagram and TikTok and it's like, right. oh mm-hmm. yeah, they do fit. Or they don't even care about the name. Like two point million followers, you know, mm. and stuff. That's true. And that, that's what I think that was the brilliance of Stephen He. Yeah, yeah. He leveraged that. He following. knew yeah. that, you know what? This is probably not going to work out unless I get I build my audience first. I'll tell you this, Steven, he got in the role because he reached out. You know, he said, uh, normally I'll say no to people. Like I'm trying to do it normal, like traditional cast people do internet or word of mouth. But Steven reached out, like, hey, listen, um, a friend recommend this project, I'm an actor. I'm like, oh, not one of these guys again, like just trying to get their way in. So I just said, hey, you know what? Just send me a reel, let me take a look or you know, have you studied what, what's the word? So I look at their resume. I was like, all right, he, he got, he took some theater acting, Shakespeare, did a couple of short films. Like, why not? It's not gonna be a big role, but come on board. And he did. He was very professional. Um, he's a great guy, by the way. He did. Awesome. He's, awesome he's a fucking great guy. Yeah. Very humble. And for yeah. those who have, if you can't see it, he did double dip in the, in the film. Like he had to play two roles because we were shorthanded with staff. I mean, cast. So he played with Norman, uh, a gangster. And then we changed Alpha. He's, uh, getting arrested as a kid or something, but you typical can't Asian filmmaker yeah. <laughs> recycling, recycling. Cast. Well, you That's can't see him. him. You can't see him. You can't see him. That which which is good. Like um, I told Steve, like just try to move your face away from the camera so people can't tell. Like yeah, you hit my face too much. I I, I didn't recognize myself. Right. You? <laughs> yeah. No, but thank you, thank you. Oh. I did five rows. What? <laughs> what? No, no, three, 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 maybe three. <laughs> Ryan made a joke. He's like, who's this guy? He's always here. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you know, Henry had a great time just participating, witnessing his fellow peers just acting it out, you know? That's great. That one of the touching things about that film was that you had friends all around. I mean, real close friends, neighborhood friends, had Wing, had Jeff, had Corky, had, you know, everybody. I knew everybody knew everybody. Oh, watching Ho? Yeah. Yeah. It was just... Uh, and they're immortalized. They're on the screen. Like right. you have right. a, it's sort of like a yearbook or, or a, a album that you have of them. Well, Leah took some great pictures. If that did, if that didn't document that whole process, yeah. God bless her soul. Like she she came on set just like I wanted to help support you, you know. And she was there almost yeah. all day just taking photos of us. Oh, you need people like that in your life. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's such a person. Like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I met her. 
Yeah. And I was just like, man, she's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, Henry, when, where do people go find your books? Uh, my books are available anywhere online. You can call what do they your, type in like, like Amazon? Uh, so what, what, what's the keyword search? Um, what's the name of your books? You can type in Chinatown Trilogy or Detective Jack U. <laughs> yep. Like on Amazon, like uh, it'd be easy to yeah, find these books. You can get them on yeah. Amazon. You can get them on. I mean, they're available now in in French and Italian and whoa. Um, not that you would want it unless I mean that means they're being read all over the world, right? Well, in France, and yeah. yeah, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be in Chinese too, translating Chinese. Oh wow! Oh, it's been translated into Chinese. It hasn't been picked up by a Chinese publisher yet. So everybody's afraid of getting ripped off. Like, you know, that's China's yeah. got a bad rap. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and where can they see the short film and support it? Uh, I know that you're getting in festivals, but is there any way if someone was curious how they can get an opportunity to watch it? Uh, maybe. I don't know about the future, but as of now, uh, our New York premiere is on August 13 with uh, Asian Cinema Vision uh, or Asian American International Film Festival. Uh, it's going to be playing at the Asian Society Museum. Which is going to be a live screen. I'm excited for that. Um, some of the cast and crew is going to be there. Um, hopefully, you guys can come too. I love you guys to be there too. Um, that's our new premiere. Anything else? I'm not too sure. It's, it's still a little early. Yeah, not just that. It's it's like a roll of the dice with these film festivals. Yeah, you know, you submit it, you get rejected, you get you don't you get picked up. Um, and I will say this: well, it was a little bit hurtful that some of these festivals, known festivals, didn't pick it up. And I get it. There's there's some kind of politics involved, but the Asian American, I was surprised they didn't pick it up some because I'm not saying it's the best film, but you should just pick it because who knows it might it should be archived, meaning like it could play it out to your Chinatown community because that's one of our goals. Like not just a film festival, but we want to screen it at every Chinatown because our film is pl- spoken in Cantonese or Toisan, and all the Chinatowns originally were from Cantonese people, and we want to show it to every district Chinatown and show like, hey, there is a community sense, is a family oriented story, not just gangsters or cops. Um, so when they didn't pick it up, I was like, all right, they're lost, let's move on. Uh, like Henry said, good things are coming and I really hoping for it uh, too. But you can follow Detective Jack U official at uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, it's on LinkedIn tree. So we update uh, the festival dates on there all the time. So. Uh, Hopefully after the New York premiere, we can get more in-person screening because I really want to see this in big screen, and especially with my friends like you two. Isn't that the goal? Yeah, right? man. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, well, really quick, Well, Norm was in the film, and I remember I asked you to play a gangster, mm-hmm. and we were talking about gangsters. Would you have jumped on just to play gangster or just have fun? Like, I know you're busy, like personally. It depends. But. I think when you caught me, yeah. uh, yeah, I remember you have to sign a multi multi year contract. <laughs> yeah, just talk to my agent here. <laughs> yeah, talk to my agent here, yeah. my manager. Um, I didn't want to. I I, I knew you you had your own ground, and I hate making that phone call to all the actors. Do you want to play gangster? I hated that, but you're you know I me. Mean? You know you're young, and you know. I'm young. We're, the, we're about the same age. Well, <laughs> camera-wise, you know, Asians uh, don't raise yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, you know, first of all, I'm flattered, right? Um, and that you even consider me and, and want me in your project. I think, um, for me, that's, the, that's my initial impression. It wasn't like, you know, what the fuck is this gangster shit? Like, mm-hmm. Certainly not. Um, I think when you text me or called me that I was actually going into an elevator with my kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, I took a big step back from the whole yeah. filmmaking thing and acting and, you know, I, I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's like getting together with my, I look at it like, you know, if I play basketball, I don't expect to get in the NBA. Mm-hmm. I, I do it because I like it. It's a lot of fun, right? Yeah. That's how I look at film. Like, I, I don't have any expectations except to make a fun project that's kind of cool, right? And I can look back at it and go, all right, this is pretty neat. I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you called me, it was like, I kind of looked at everything. It was weird, right? Because I haven't, I really was maybe a year or two removed from the whole thing where I'm just like saying no to stuff or um, just yeah, my mind completely yeah. divorced from it. And um, 
I'm looking at my kids and I'm just like, yeah, like, nah. <laughs> so it had nothing to do with I, I being a gangster. That, right? I get a call, yeah. hey, Will, you know, you want to do this role? I'm, I'm not too big or too small. I'm just going to be like, yeah, it sounds like fun. I'll do it. That was me before this. But now I really have to be extremely selective what, how, how I commit to time because I know what being in a film feels like. Mm-hmm. I know the dedication and the hours and the takes and the retakes and standing around like, I know it all too well. Mm-hmm. So I just got to ask myself, do I want to do that or do I want to spend time with my kids? Yeah, yeah. All right. Priorities first, man. So that's yeah. 95% of my life right now. Yeah. And I respect it's, you and Norman. It's my you, family. You and then the 5% are, is the podcast. Yeah, because you, know? yeah, you both are parents and taking the time just to interview us and help support our film. You know, yeah. that, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah. And, and we hope it. we have, uh, you know, for you, some type of role that's more substantial than gangster. So I got you in mind for some other Woo. things. Woo. Oh. Wait, multi-year deal. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to my agent. <laughs> no, Henry, we good. You, we can speak directly. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. I gotta take, to Florida, huh? I gotta take, <laughs> well, oh, there, there are, air, there are airplanes, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> there are airplanes. There's, there's jets. Some for you too, bro. <laughs> okay, thank you. Like, be gangster though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind be the toughest actually, bun. Actually, I don't mind playing a gangster. There, there I, you yeah. go. There you go. And, I mean, uh, are your kids tall enough to play basketball? You know what? Um, they're both tennis players. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. Smart. They're both tennis players. And um, they're actually pretty good. Okay. They're actually really good. Um, so I think I'm, I'm very happy for them. It's an extremely expensive sport. Um, but they love it. And, uh, but it would be nice if you can play b-ball with them a little bit. You know what? Probably not. No. They, they, I tried, and they're like, hey, they'll shoot around. They'll appease me for like maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then go, Daddy, can we go to the park now? Can we go somewhere else? They'll start playing kickball with the basketball, which is like circle. They're just, <laughs> you're, you're messing up the basketball. They'll kick it like, come on, yay, like it's soccer. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, you know what? Go. Just go. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have two little basketball players, which is okay. It's you know, whatever they want to be. You know. I mean, you recruited his kid. I mean, he gets old enough. Oh, yeah. But he's he's moving. Well, you never know, man. You never know. Yeah. Back and if forth. You were, if you were local, yeah, you, dude, man, if you're, you're, you know, your son is uh, down to play some hoops. Yeah. Definitely. Or just think um, Venus and Serena Williams. Mm. You never know, man. You, you never know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count my daughters out. I no, think, that's I think, what I'm saying. I think they're special. I yeah. think they're really special. Uh, and I could be biased because I'm their dad. But uh, they they seem ahead of their age group, you know. It's a long road. I'm not naive, but you know they. they well, really I'm in respect, Florida, so you know they you, respect the, the best game. courts are in Florida, you know. So you bring them down, you know. You want to train? <laughs> I appreciate that, Norm. Of course. <laughs> um, Patrick, now just to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Some some people just hearing about you for the first time and maybe super curious about seeing what existing work that you have. Where can they find that? Oh, um, it's on on my Vimeo channel uh, at. My third name Chen Shi Hao. Also, some of them are on my Instagram at Pat Mander uh, on the ITV, IGTV Live, whatever. It's it's archived there, so people can see it. So if you are really into your phone, and you want to see a short film on your phone, it's there. Right. Um, yeah, you know, nothing on YouTube yet because I can't monetize that like like Stephen He. You yeah. know. Yeah, um, but yeah, it works out there. I use my surname most of the time because I'm really proud of my name. Uh, I mean, it's not my given name, but it's my you know, ancestor origin, you know, my family mm-hmm. gave it to me. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful, Patrick. Then we're both excited to see where this is going to take off. Detective Jack Hughes coming back to New York City. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. And yeah. thank you so much for the support. Thanks for the endearing work, guys. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, guys. Lucky Boys out. Lucky Boys Podcast.